Hello everyone, welcome back to our lecture series to under network security dealing with principle of security. In the last video, we have seen about why a network security is needed. Please do like, share, subscribe and comment. After seeing why security is needed, for each of the security provided, there is some principle that should be followed. So, these are the principle that is followed for a security. Confidentiality, integrity, authentication, non-repudiation, access control, availability. So, these are the six principle of basic six principle of security that need to be followed. Now, in this video, we'll be detailedly seeing about what these principles are. So, first is confidentiality. As the name explains, we obviously know confidentiality is nothing but handling a kind of secret, right? So, it should be confidential between one or one to two person. That's it. So, now what happens here is confidentiality. When you have a network security or protocols that is followed while transferring data from one end to the other end, confidentiality must also be maintained such that the sender A is sending a message which is secret that, sh that these, uh, the recipient B should understand the secret. Now, A and B only should know that secret. No other third person are allowed to see. If that is so, then it is said that confidentiality is maintained. But now here you can see there is another user called C who is accessing that secret. Now, what you can tell? So, A is sending the secret to B, but then the member C or the user C is hacking that secret and reading that message sent from A to B. Now, you can tell that there is an attack called interception. It is nothing but there is a loss of message. When it is sent from one end to the other end, it doesn't reach properly to another end. There is a loss of message where the confidentiality obviously is lost. Right. So, this is what confidentiality is. Next is authentication. So, when you are maintaining confidentiality, obviously there should be an authentication that should be followed. That is, if A is sending a message to B, a should send, that is B should, after receiving, receiving the message, B should send an authentication to A telling that I have received the message. Or before sending the message, the user A has to tell B that I am the user who is accessing you. So, uh, some type of authentication in kind of OTP or in kind of secret code can be shared between the user to maintain the authentication. If suppose if you fail to maintain the authentication, what happens is now the user A has to send the message to B. But in this diagram, you can see the C, the user C, which is a third person is acting like user A and sending the message to user B. Now, you can see that some other third person is wrongly accessing the data and pretending to be that user where the message is sent to the recipient. So, such kind of attack is called as fabrication. That is not the original data is sent. Only fabricated data is sent to the recipient end. So, if fabrication is possible in a network, obviously there is no authentication maintained in the network. Next is integrity. So, how we maintain confidentiality, how we need uh, authentication to maintain the secrecy of the message, uh, you have to maintain the integrity of the message. That is, here the content of the message will be changed after sending. That is when A is sending a message to B. The message will not be directly sent. Whatever the message that is sent from A is completely changed before reaching the recipient. That is, see here you can see a dollar of 100 is transferred to B. Now actual root is this. But then it is following another route where this dollar thousand is being 
changed as dollar dollar 100 is been changed as dollar 1000 so, so integrity is lost so such kind of modification if it occurs then there is the possibility of losing the integrity in the transmission of data right so next non-repudiation non-repudiation is nothing but here this user a is sending some content to user b now it has already the message is already received to b after sending it to b the user is refusing that that message was not sent by that particular user that is you are denying the user is denying something which should, which should not be sent See, when, when you are chatting with each other, unknowingly, we send some message to an unknown person. Unknowingly, we send it, right? So, after sending only, we recognize that we have wrongly sent and we refuse that message, telling that this is the message not sent for you. So, such thing are called as non-repudiation. So, non-repudiation, what, uh, what it does not allow is the sender of the message to refuse. It, it will not allow the sender to refuse for that message next is access control so access control is like how in the diagram you can see so when you want to enter a particular space so when you want to enter your hod's cabin you might be uh, you have to you need to put your fingerprint and then enter into the hod's cabin or if you want to enter into a confidential area you have to either do face recognition or fingerprint recognition then enter into the area that is that is nothing but access control is so here here this access control will tell you which user has to get into which network or which user has to access that particular message it will not be open for all the user only when you have the access control you will be able to see that data in the website so how your bank server works only when you enter your username and password you are allowed to see your home page so it, it, the bank confirms that it is you who is entering and accessing the details so you can classify this access control as role management and rule management now you can say say that the role management is done by the client side so the client has to choose the role who he is or who she is whether he he or she has the access control to enter into some website so role management will be done by the client rule management is nothing but it will be done by the server the server will impose some rules to be followed to enter into that website say we are telling that i am not robot i am a human being then we enter into one website so it is nothing but a kind of rule management posed by the server only if you prove that you are not robot you are entering into that particular server so this is what is access control is next is availability so availability is availability of information as and when needed it might be it might be any kind of information or any type of resources so only the authorized user will have the ability to access that available resources so if suppose the user a wants to take some resources from user b it has to approach user b get authentication and get the data or access the availability of the resources needed if that is not done if if another user or the third party who opposes that user user a to send uh, to get the data from the user b then some interruption is happening between user a and user b by a third user so when there is an interruption then the availability of the resources need to be fetched by the user become in vain it cannot reach the availability of the resources so as we saw availability access control non-repudiation integrity authentication and confidentiality all these six basic principle has to be completely followed to maintain the security in the transmission of data so if you could not understand any of the points explained let me know in the comment section 
i'll be addressing you in the upcoming videos thank you